Welcome to the channel, everyone. BLN 437 and today I'm going to discuss why the Boston Red Sox should not give J.D. Martinez a long-term deal. And with that being said, let's just get straight into the video. So, you guys are probably saying to yourselves, what? Why would you say that? Why doesn't J.D. Martinez deserve a long-term deal? You need to pay the man. He's one of the best hitters in the market. He hit like 300. He had 45 home runs, 100 plus RBIs. He can hit the ball to all portions of the field. Listen, I know. I know. Trust me, everything that I just said, I know he can do. I do. There's no denying that. I'm not denying that he can't do that. I'm just saying he doesn't deserve a long-term deal. And the reason why he doesn't deserve a long-term deal, let's look at some of the guys that have signed seven-year deals at roughly $175 million or more. Chris Davis, Jacoby Ellsbury, Jason Hayward, Albert Pujols, Prince Fielder. Remember those names? Now, what is the common theme of those guys? They've all signed at age 30 or a little older than age 30. And on top of that, they haven't really been the same player they once were once signing that deal. And to be fair, when you compare J.D. Martinez to the dollar amount that he wants, are you going to say that he's worth just as much as Albert Pujols was when he left this, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals or Prince Fielder when he signed with the Detroit Tigers? I don't think so. Now, don't get me wrong, great hitter. I just don't think that he was worth more than what those guys were worth when they hit the market. And if I want to compare long-term deals and who got $200 million, I don't think so. And if you're the Boston Red Sox, you've already been burned by giving guys lots of money to come to your team. Hanley Ramirez... Pablo Sandoval, David Price has not proved himself yet, so I, I'm going to put him on the list, but he could be taken out if he does, if he performs well over the next few years of that contract. Carl Crawford never worked out, and Adrian Gonzalez worked out, but not enough for them to want to keep him. So, what is that telling you? Why should the Red Sox have to give in to anything when it comes to J.D. Martinez? In my opinion, that's how I look at it. Why? None of the deals that I've signed when it comes to guys like Pablo Sandoval, Hanley Ramirez, Carl Crawford, and some of these other marquee guys that I've signed that have been big-time free agents and people have said we needed them. They haven't worked out. They haven't lived up to expectations. And listen, Boston is a different animal than playing in Arizona and Detroit. It's not the same. When you go into a slump, immediately, you're going to hear it. And Carl Crawford never recovered when he went into his slump. Let's be that. That's honest. Let's not even talk about that when he went into that slump he was never the same player again he couldn't find himself again he lost all confidence in his ability and to be honest with you David Price has not lived up to his contract he has not lived up to expectations and the Boston media has gotten on him a lot he doesn't even want to talk to the Boston media on days that he's not pitching he doesn't he only wants to talk to them on the days that he's starting because to be honest with you I don't think he can handle it I don't Hanley Ramirez has not been the same player since he left LA he struggled. And Pablo Sandoval, once he came into camp in a way that fans didn't like and the media just got on him about it, was never the same player as well. So does he have, first of all, that mental toughness to get through it? I don't know because I haven't seen him in a big market, one. Two, the other thing is, is you have that list, to me, of players who didn't work out in Boston and even... Players that have signed that are gonna that players that have signed the type of deal that he wants that haven't lived up to those deals because of either health or just because they just couldn't find it anymore. So to be honest with you, where where does that put JD Martinez? I know how great of a hitter JD Martinez can be. He changed his swing once arriving to the Detroit Tigers. He helped the Arizona Diamondbacks. Let's face it, he he pretty much helped and carried the Arizona Diamondbacks into the postseason along with Paul Goldschmidt. He did. He, he absolutely did, but he's not he's not worth 175 close to $200 million for maybe five to seven years. He's just not. I know a lot of people love J.D. Martinez. I know a lot of people want J.D. Martinez to be with the Red Sox or to be on their team. I know that. I just don't see why he needs that much money, though. He's not, to me, once again, better than Albert Pujols when Albert Pujols first signed his deal with the Los Angeles Angels. He's not better than Prince Fido when Prince Fido signed his deal with the Detroit Tigers. And when I look at the list of Jacoby Ellsbury, Chris Davis, and Jason Hayward, those deals haven't panned out at all. They just haven't. And they, and you see teams like the Yankees, the Cubs, and hell, even the Baltimore Orioles that are going to struggle with trying to trade those guys because they don't want them anymore. 
Now, I shouldn't say that about Jason Hayward because maybe the Cubs want Jason Hayward, but the Yankees want to get rid of Jacoby Osbury, but that contract makes it so that they can't, and he hasn't performed. And as for the Baltimore Orioles, they're on, they're on the verge of being a part of a rebuild, and I don't see how anybody's going to want Chris Davis because Chris Davis wasn't that great last season. He had 26 home runs and 61 RBIs, and I believe he hit 219. Jay Bruce did that and got a three-year deal, or did better than that and got a three-year deal. Roughly, what, $50 million, I believe it was? So, what, what, why do I need to pay this guy for? I understand he's oh, he, one of the best hitters in the game, but I, I just can't. I can't. If I'm the Red Sox, I can't. I can't. You look at the previous deals that they've made, they haven't worked out really, really that, that well. You look at some of the guys that have signed those contracts, it just doesn't work. I don't believe in signing players in their age 30 season to long-term deals. I just don't. I can sign you to a three- or four-year deal, but I'm not going to sign you to a a seven-year deal. And I'm not... Let, let's look at more guys that are actually in his field. Joanna Suspeta's got a big-time deal from the Mets. And Joanna Suspeta's his first season, was injured. He, ha- he hasn't really played well, at least, when he's been on the field as well. So... I just think it's hard because you don't know what can happen. Injuries can happen at any moment in the game. You don't know how his confidence is going to be once he starts to struggle out there in Boston. And to be honest with you, I don't think that they need him. They don't. Jackie Bradley Jr. is a good enough outfielder. Mookie Betts is a good enough outfielder. Andrew Benintendi is a good enough outfielder. And when you look at the guys that have produced for the Boston Red Sox, right? After they've made some of these big trades and acquisitions, right? Who Who's really been their best players? The guys that they've brought up through their farm system, Mookie Betts, Benintendi, Bogarts, Rafael Devers, Dustin Pedroia is still decent when he can stay healthy. So why do I need to sign a guy that, yes, all he's going to do, all he's really going to do in my lineup is add power. I understand that power is a big thing in this game, but when the Red Sox are on and when the Red Sox are great, they're great. And to be honest with you, I don't believe that the Red Sox are missing a big power bat. I mean, they kind of are because David Ortiz was that big power bat. I'm not going to say that. Actually, I should revoke that part. But they should, they they can get power from Mookie Betts. I believe Mookie Betts can hit 30 home runs. I believe Ben Benintendi can hit 35 home runs. I believe that guys like Mitch Moreland, if he's given an opportunity, can hit 20 home runs along with Hanley, uh, Hanley Ramirez hitting 20. So that's 40 home runs out of your first base slash DH. And I, be- I believe that that's enough power. I really do. And Xander Bogarts, if he can hit 300, give you 10 to 15 home runs, and give you 70 to 80 RBIs, and Pedroia comes back and he can be productive, that's great. I think that's enough. I really, really do. They have a good enough rotation. Their pen is a little, sh- it's a little kind of shaky to me. But I believe they have enough to win the American League East, and I believe they have enough to be a... American League Championship team, and even a War Series team. So, that's just my thoughts on J.D. Martinez. My quick thoughts, I wanted to get that out there. Yes, I know J.D. Martinez is a great hitter. Yes, I know that J.D. Martinez is one of the best hitters in the game of baseball. I just don't trust that contract, or giving him that contract, I should say. And I don't trust the fact that you just don't know what you're going to get. It's unknown. It's completely unknown because we thought, or at least the Red Sox, I should say, thought that Hanley Ramirez and Pablo Sandoval are going to work out. Did they work out? No. The Yankees saw Jacoby Osbury was going to work out. He didn't work out. Orioles thought that Chris Davis would work out. He hasn't really up to this point. So let's let's look at those deals, guys, and let's be honest. It doesn't work. So, like I said, with that being said, if you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like down below. Comment as well. Let me know what you guys think about the J.D. Martinez kind of just off-season drama that's going on. He seems to want more money. The Red Sox did offer him five years, 125. I think that's more than enough for J.D. Martinez. Maybe some of you guys disagree with me. And if you are new, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.